And it kind of took me about like eight to nine months of being in it and, and killing myself for it to realize that like I'm creating the image that I want to relate to people and I'm creating my brand for myself. When you're modeling, do you feel like anyone's ever taken a portrait of you? Yeah, I do feel like I've gotten a handful of photos that I really feel like, like that's me, you know? Because I do have a more than enough photos that I feel like I'm just like, I'll get back and I'm like, holy shit, that's me, you know? Like it doesn't really translate. Like I, I look great and the photo's beautiful mm -hmm. and like I look like what I want to look like. Like you said, like if you're showing my kids a photo of me when I was 21, like that's not a photo I'm gonna show them. But yeah, the photos that I feel like really capture me and I feel like more of a connection with, sometimes are the photos that are taken off guard. Like sometimes the, sh the one that's the cover photo of the Instagram is like, I wasn't modeling in that photo. I was just kind of like looking off and they snapped mm -hmm. the photo or I was laughing at something and they snapped the photo. And sometimes I think those are my favorite because they're just really genuine. And we're so in the moment and they really captured that that like moment perfectly. As a model, you're in front of the camera and there's a lot of attention on your appearance. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with, do you feel like there's a hyper focus on your appearance? Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely something I struggled with a lot when I first started modeling. Um, realizing that, oh, now my appearance is my brand. My appearance is what matters because that's what they're seeing through the camera lens. And so I really harped myself on looking a certain way or making sure my hair didn't change or I didn't look necessarily the way I wanted to, it to, but the way that people wanted it to. And it kind of took me about like eight to nine months of being in it and, and killing myself for it to realize that like, I'm creating the image that I want to relate to people and I'm creating mm -hmm. my brand for myself. Um, and when you're an agency model, it's a little bit different because they can control and you have to go through them when you want to change your appearance. But in terms of me being a freelance model, I am controlling my brand. I'm controlling what people see of me. And so you can choose whether you want to shoot with me or not, whether you want to mm -hmm. be a part of who I am, you know? Um, Realizing your image was your brand. Right. And then they could choose. Yeah. And them letting them decide, okay, whether I want to collaborate and work with this person and this is their brand. Do you ever struggle with like your physical appearance in terms of like fitness or? Um, yeah, it's like kind of goes down the same train of like feeling the pressure to that they tell you models need to be skinny, models need to be tall, they need to be this size, this height, this whatever. And yes, again, when you get into agency world and runway shows and yeah they do have requirements like that I'm not going to pretend like that doesn't exist anymore but we are also in 2022 and there's so many opportunities to not look like model type A like companies are looking for model type B and C and D and realizing that you don't have to be that anymore to be a so-called model is something that a lot of people um, are coming to terms with and I think it's great um, but in terms of myself um, again that's something I struggled with a lot in the beginning and realizing that like Oh, I thinking I needed to be thin and if I got heavier, I would have to stop modeling. And putting that pressure on myself when one, like thankfully I had dance and like a, like a constant source of exercise that um, kept me where I wanted to be so I didn't have to worry about it. But um, now I don't care anymore because again, I'm, whether you want to shoot with me if I'm 100 pounds or you want to shoot with me if I'm 200 pounds, that's your call, you know? How about you, Dan? <laughs> Do you charge for <laughs> 200 pounds? I don't know if I can afford you. No, you can't. I'm pricey when I get there. So I know dance is a big part of your life, and I know you got a chance to teach it recently. What was that like? Um, I love it. It's such a satisfying way to release my passion because I love kids, and I love teaching as well. And then combining my third passion dance right in there is, um, feels really natural to me. And um, getting to share that joy and seeing little girls or little boys in those dance classes and them getting excited about that, even like in the modeling classes I taught as well, um, kind of sparking an interest whether it sticks or not is like something that is just so, so, so satisfying.
Can you speak? It's an interview. You've got to articulate. Satisfying. I'm just going to crudely dub your mouth <laughs> with another voice. Yeah. I'm going to hire her. Dub it so yeah. it doesn't sound like that, Dan. Oh, yeah. Baby back ribs. <laughs>